Good morning. We'd like to welcome you to Hope Family Church and Outreach Pains Ministries. We're so glad that you could join us today. And um, I hope you all have had a wonderful week. And I'd like to, to start with, share a few words out of God's Holy Bible. And this is found in Philippians chapter 4. And it says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last your care for me has flourished again, Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. This is Paul speaking to the Philippians and to us. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am in to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so the Apostle Paul, yes, he had problems. He lived in this world like we do. And there are tribulations sometimes in this world. And there's trials and there's needs and there's different situations in our life. And But Paul had learned to trust God in every one of these situations, even if he was having rough times, if he was having good times, if he had money, if he didn't have money. He just learned to be content in whatever state he was in. And he also learned in this verse uh, 13 of Philippians chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, it's good to write scriptures like this down, little scriptures like that, because if you are going through a hard time and, and you're doing something, maybe you're, you've been asked to do something at, at, at work or at school that you've never tried to do before, just write this scripture down and say it out loud and confess it to yourself because God's word is powerful. It's very powerful and it can change your train of thought. It can change, it can give you confidence. It can give you victory in your life. Stand on God's word. Whenever you're reading during your daily reading plan, your daily Bible reading, however you read your Bible, whether it's chapter by chapter, verse by verse, or if you have a Bible, pre-printed Bible plan, when you come against uh, across scriptures that bless you, that minister to you, that give hope to your soul, just write those down. Put them on a little card or something and stick it on your mirror at home. Stick it on your bulletin board by your desk at work. Stick it in your desk drawer, wherever you have to put it, and, or stick it in your Bible and remind yourself, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And um, we're going to have a great service today. Pastor Steve has a wonderful word from the Lord for us. And uh, Joshua is going to be coming up here and giving us some announcements. And enjoy the service. God bless you. Welcome and thank you for joining us here at Haynes Ministries Hope Family Church. We're so glad you could be with us today. We do live stream every Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time and we would love for you to join us in that time of getting into the Word and fellowshipping and just having a wonderful church service right from the comfort of your very own home or your very own computer. We also have a Bible study every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time and we would love for you to come and join us in that too. We go through the Bible book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse and we would love for you to come and join us and maybe we could get into the Word together. And if you have any questions about today's service, maybe something wasn't explained properly for you, enough for you, uh, go ahead and email us at HanesMinistries at gmail.com because what we want you to take away from this is something that will fundamentally change your life and change your perspective of, of how life is for the Christian believer. So thank you again for joining us. We have a wonderful sermon ready by Pastor Steve. I believe today we're continuing the Proverbs series. And uh, to go ahead, open up your Bible right now. I'll give you that opportunity. Maybe you could even uh, pause us or just open up a new tab. Press Control T. It'll open up a new tab. And go ahead and look up a Bible online if you don't have a Bible readily available for you on your phone or uh, in a physical, actual book format. And go ahead and join us for today's wonderful word from Pastor Steve. So thank you again. We do have a prayer line. It's 918-893-5522. If you ever have need of prayer, go ahead and give us a call at 918-593-5522. 
uh, 918-893-5522. It's 918-893-5522. And we would love to hear from you and to lift your needs up before the Lord. So without further ado, we're going to welcome up Pastor Steve. And he's going to share a wonderful message from the book of Proverbs. Amen. Amen. I think uh, this will be the tenth week on uh, Proverbs, and I think uh, next Sunday Josh is going to be preaching. He's going to be preaching. He's going to have a wonderful word, a word yeah. in due season, yeah. and uh, after he preaches, we'll resume the Proverbs series. But. Uh, I'm going to pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for this time and this opportunity that we have to share your word. We thank you for your anointing upon the word and upon the ears for listening, Lord. We just give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Solomon was the wisest man in the world. Uh, Proverbs was written to encourage others and uh, acquire disciplined skill in right living. God wants us to live right, to bring uh, moral discipline or correction. How many knows that the Word of God will discipline you, that it'll correct you, that it'll uh, show you the way, and God will keep you on the straight and narrow. Amen? Amen. And we heard in chapter 1 the Proverbs of Solomon the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and we have talked about warnings against rejecting knowledge and and so on and so forth the only thing I know to tell you from this point is just to check the archives yeah. and to catch up with us amen but today we're going to be going over Proverbs chapter 10 that's Proverbs chapter 10 and I've just simply named this one Wisdom versus Folly. Uh, we went from uh, Proverbs 1 through chapters 1 through 9, and Solomon is teaching sons, you know, the right way to live. And uh, we're starting in chapter 10, and these are parallel statements. They're just showing contrast of uh, the righteous way and the wicked way. The righteous way and the folly way. Amen. Uh, and these parallel statements speak a story. You know, you've often heard Jesus speak in parables. And you've heard me say before that parables, the Greek word was parabole. And that was just something called alongside something to help you understand it a little better. Amen. Well, that's kind of what these are. They're, par they're parallel statements. And starting in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, it says, A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son grief to his mother. And I just want to point out that... Uh, I could have studied the Hebrew and studied this and studied that, but these uh, proverbs here are more or less self-explanatory that uh, we're, we're going to go over them because it's part of uh, the proverb series, Embracing Wisdom. And uh, we're just going to go over them. So grab your Bible, and I'll be reading from the New International Version, the NIV. And in chapter verse 2 of chapter 10, it says... Ill-gotten treasures are of no value, but righteousness delivers from death. Ill-gotten treasures are of no value. There's no value whatsoever. You know, if you give a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, you build up treasure in heaven. Amen? Yeah. If you get ill-gotten treasures, well, there's not going to value. Oh, it might have a little value here on earth. But it's not going to have any spiritual value whatsoever, amen? But it says, but righteousness delivers from death. What are you saying, Brother Steve? Well, your treasures won't buy your way out of death, amen? 
you know, I once was driving to work and heard on a talk show about a very wealthy man. And this is years ago when $60,000 was even more than what it is today. But he spent, he was dying, and he spent $60,000 on an asbestos casket. And the reason he spent $60,000 on an asbestos, asbestos casket was to protect him from the flames of hell. He knew there was a heaven, he knew there was a hell, but no one had ever explained the way of salvation to him. So he felt like if he spent all this money on an asbestos casket, it protected from the flames of hell. Well, I got news for you. Money won't buy you out of hell, amen. That's right. So ill-gotten treasures are of no value. And in verse 3 it says, The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. The Lord is not going to let the righteous go hungry. Who's the righteous? The righteous are the ones that love the Lord. The righteous are the ones that obey the Lord. The righteous are the ones that follow after the Lord. Amen. Uh, who are the ones that love Jesus? He says the ones that does his will or the ones that follows his word. Amen. Everything we've been teaching from Proverbs 1 through 9, if you obey that word, if you obey that word, you're considered the righteous. Amen. You're considered the righteous. But he thwarts the craving of the wicked. Now it might look like the wicked are, you know, coming out ahead there for a while. But just give it a, give it a while and it'll turn around. Amen. It says in verse 4, Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Remember we talked about the ant? Then we talked about the sluggard? We talked about how the ant didn't have a supervisor or a commander, yet he knew exactly what to do and when to do it, and he did it. But the sluggard, you know, just folded his hands and stayed in bed. But it says lazy hands make a poor man. Well, if you don't get up to harvest your crop, it's just going to rot and wither, amen? And you're going to do without. God wants us to get up every day and go to work. He hasn't called us to be lazy, amen. Yeah. Diligent hands bring wealth. And it says in verse 5, He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Verse 6 says, Blessings crown the head of the righteous, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. Uh, in verse 7 it says the memory of the righteous will be a blessing but the name of the wicked will rot man I tell you what these verses are self explanatory amen no need to study the Hebrew just take it for what it's worth and, uh, and just follow these words these are parallel statements in, in these mm -hmm. verses amen the wise in heart accepts commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. It says the wise in heart accepts commands. How many of us hate to be told what to do? Well, don't tell me what to do. I've heard that so many times. That's just pride. Yeah. Don't tell me what to do. Did you hear him? He's telling me what to do. It says the wise in heart accepts commands. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes we need to be told what to do. Yeah. You know, we need to listen to wise counsel. But it says, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. In verse 9, it says, the man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked paths will be found out. He who winks maliciously causes grief and a chattering fool comes to ruin. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. How many knows that the power of life and death are in the tongue? It says the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. How many knows that we can speak good words 
and and reap a good harvest from it. Amen. But it but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. In verse twelve, it says, "Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers over all wrongs." What does love say? Yeah. Uh, it says love covers all wrongs. So let me just go over that real quick. First Corinthians thirteen. It says in verse one, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. You know, love doesn't remember any record of wrong. Amen. Uh, hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers all wrongs. You know, you can kick love, but yet it's not going to remember that kick. Amen. It covers a multitude of sins. In verse 13 it says, Wisdom is found on the lips of the discerning, but a rod for the back of him who lacks judgment. Wise men store up knowledge, but the mouth of a fool invites ruin. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city, but poverty is the ruin of the poor. The wages of the righteous bring them life, but the income of the wicked brings them punishment. He who heeds discipline shows the way to life. He who heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. That's the same as being uh, told what to do, amen? Uh, he who heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. Sometimes we need to be corrected. Sometimes we need to be told, this is the way, walk ye in it. Amen? And not be offended when someone comes to you and tells you that, you know, you're not heading the right way. You know, we, we get on that kick of, he's telling me what to do again. You know, pride is what got the devil kicked out. Amen? And God hates pride. Amen? He hates pride. That's one of the things he hates. Uh, let me uh, let me look uh, back at Proverbs four. Proverbs four. Uh, hang on here. Oh, Proverbs. I think it's Proverbs six. I'm sorry. It says in Proverbs 6.16, it says, There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him, and the very first one is haughty eyes. Haughty eyes is just simply pride. God has that on his number one hate list. Pride. Pride. It's stinking, lousy pride. Uh, it says in verse 18 of Proverbs 10, He who conceals his hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. Uh, man, he who conceals his hatred has lying lips. You know, we might go to someone and say, Why do you hate them so much? You know, I don't hate them. But deep down they hate them with all their heart, you know. They just don't want to own up to it. Amen? Yeah. If we hate somebody, we need to own up to it. Ask the Lord to cleanse us from it. 
you know, First John 1, 9. He's, you know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. So we need to get purged from that. You know, I worked, I built air-cooled heat exchangers for three decades, and every once in a while those pressure vessels those coil sections, we would nitrogen purge them. Nitrogen purge them. That just simply meant it, you know, we'd hydro test with water. And it just simply meant that, you know, it would be dry inside and that there would be no rust, that there'd be no, you know, cor you know corrosion. corrosion or junk in there and all that stuff, you know. Well, that's what we need to do. We need to purge ourselves with the Word of God. Amen? Uh, it says in verse 19, it says, When words are many, sin is not absent. But he who holds his tongue is wise. You ever heard the term, bite your tongue? Well, sometimes when the boss is getting on to you, you just need to bite your tongue. Amen? Uh, how many knows that it'd feel real good to the flesh? To tell your boss off, or to tell a friend off, or to tell the stranger off, or Amen. I mean, I, it really does. It makes your flesh feel good. But it says, "But he who holds his tongue is wise." If you hold your tongue, first of all, it might keep you from getting slapped, getting fired, or getting fired. <laughs> You know, just say, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Amen. And verse 20 says, The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is of little value. The lips of the righteous nourish many, but fools die for lack of judgment. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth, and he adds no trouble to it. I mean, those. How's that say in the King James? There's the new King James. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Susie said in the New King James, says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, uh -huh. but he adds no sorrow to it. How many want to be rich and not have sorrow for it? You know, how many knows if you get illegal gain, you're always going to have some kind of fear, some kind of sorrow, amen? Yeah. Wondering if the police is going to catch up with you or... You know, if you've stolen it or gotten it illegally or or just however, but when the Lord gives you wealth, He adds no sorrow to it, amen? He adds no trouble to it. A fool finds pleasure in evil conduct, but a man of understanding delights in wisdom. What the wicked dreads will overtake him. What the, richest, uh, what the righteous desire will be granted. Now, that doesn't say maybe or if. But it says the righteous, the desire of the righteous will be granted. How many of us in this place today have desires? Well, God says that that desire will be granted. Does it line up with the word of God? It'll be granted. Amen. When the storm is swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand firm forever. As vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is a sluggard to those who send him. You know, remember what we said a sluggard was? He's just lazy, didn't do anything, worthless. You know, if someone sends a sluggard to do business for them, they're going to wish they hadn't, amen? Say, so I should have just done it myself. Well, if you sent a sluggard, you probably should have. <laughs> you should have just done it yourself. It says in verse 27, The fear of the Lord adds length to life. But the years of the wicked are cut short. The prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing. The way of the Lord is a refuge for the righteous, but it is a ruin of those who do evil. The righteous will never be uprooted, but the wicked will not remain in the land. The mouth of the righteous bring forth wisdom, but a perverse tongue will be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is fitting, but the mouth of the wicked, only what is perverse. You know, 
we've talked a lot about wisdom versus folly. Amen. Yeah. You remember that every day we have a choice between blessing and cursing? You know, we're going to choose the way of blessing. Amen. On that side of the hill, on that side of the mountain is blessing. On that side of the mountain is cursing. I'm going to look towards the mountain where the blessing is. Amen. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, like I said, next week Josh is going to be preaching. And uh, verses, or chapters 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15... Uh, I believe are all parallel statements like we just went over today. So we're just gonna we're just gonna move right along in the, in the Word in in Proverbs, and we're gonna get through all thirty one chapters. We're gonna uh, eventually put it. I think on Josh is gonna put it on something. We're gonna make it available. Uh, embracing wisdom. A Proverbs series of 31 chapters. That's one for every day of the month. Amen. You know, you might be feeling down and and you, you listen to whatever day of the month it is uh, on the Proverbs series. Well, it might perk you up, you know. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to close right there. Uh, Josh is preaching next week, but next time I stand up here, I'll be going over Proverbs chapter 11. And it's going to be more uh, parallel statements and such. And we're just going to continue on the Word, in the Word. And my wife is coming and she's going to lead us in a salvation prayer. And she's going to take up an offering and, and uh, she's going to close the service from there. Praise God. You know, wisdom and knowledge um, do tend to make people live longer and have a better life while they're at it, too, because, you know, if you make bad choices, it can affect your very life. It can affect your health. It can affect your joy. It can affect your peace. And I wanted to um, uh, point out, again, where Pastor Steve was reading in Proverbs, chapter 10 verse 17 it says he who keeps instruction is in the way of life but he who refuses correction goes astray and in the niv it said they lead other people astray too and you know we all make mistakes and as we're growing in the lord sometimes we do something or we mess up and sometimes we'll have a godly man or woman of god come and and show us our error, you know, that this is what the Word says, this is really what you need to be doing, you shouldn't be doing that. And we, we have a choice then. Are we going to get mad because of pride? Or are we going to, I don't, you know, most of us don't like correction. You know, we don't like to hear it. To but, but whether we like it or not, are we going to listen to it? And are we going to think, you know, they're, you know, it kind of upset me that they said that, but they were right. And so I asked God to forgive me and I'm going to change my ways and I'm not going to do that anymore. I'll do the right thing. You know, um, we are human beings and we make mistakes. But if we listen to correction, then we're a wise man. Then we're a righteous person, you know. And But if we don't, not only can we hurt ourselves, but we can hurt other people if we don't listen to correction. We could lead others astray as well. And, oh, I, I knew this pastor some years back that was a mighty man of God and who's well respected in the community. He had a very large church, but he got into false doctrine and he was saying things that weren't right. And he had several other ministers come and try to talk to him and say, you know, brother, this isn't right. You're getting off in the air. But he wouldn't listen to them. And he continued to lead people astray. Well, what happened? Um, unfortunately, there's probably a lot of people hurt because of him being an heir, but also his church dwindled down because there were people 
that knew that wasn't right and God couldn't keep blessing his ministry because, you know, he kept teaching error and after, after a while his church dwindled down to nothing. You know, we need to listen to correction, especially if it's in tune with the Word of God. Now, if someone tells you something or criticizes you something and, and it has no bearing on the Word of God and you know you're right, you know, you weigh it and you pray about it and you know you're right, then, yeah, I'll disregard that. But if they're speaking words of truth and words of life, and you know that it's wrong, um, you need to just turn away from pride, receive the correction, and change your ways. But anyway, some of you today that are watching have never asked Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. And, you know, it's not a matter of how much good or how much bad you've done. Doing more good works than bad works isn't going to win your way to heaven. It's because... God sent his son Jesus, who was without sin, to die on the cross to pay the punishment, the penalty of your sins. And then on the third day, he rose again from the dead so that we could know that we could have a life of victory over sin. So it's not because of what you've done, what you haven't done, they'll get you into heaven. It's what Jesus did. And all you have to do is believe and accept this free gift that he has given you. Pray this prayer with me. Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus to pay the price for my sins. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and become master over my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer in faith believing, you are now a child of God. You have changed your path. You're on your way to heaven. Get out your Holy Bible. Start reading it. If you don't have one, get one. Like Joshua was saying earlier, you can get online even and read Bibles online. Read the Holy Bible. Join us on Wednesday nights with our prayer meetings. You can learn more about God's Word, whether or not... You just got saved today or you've been a Christian for 40 years, you can learn something by going to our Bible study. And now uh, we are taking up our offering. Uh, we dedicate this money to the service of the Lord. And if you've been blessed by our service, we'd like for you to prayerfully consider giving to the work and sharing in this ministry. You can send your tax-deductible gifts to Haynes Ministries at P.O. Box 1406, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013. That's Haynes Ministries, P.O. Box 1406, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013. Or you can go to HanesMinistries.org and pay via PayPal. We want to hear from you. Is, has God saved you today? Has he blessed your life in some way? Do you have a prayer request? Again, as Joshua said earlier, you can send an email to HanesMinistries at gmail.com, HanesMinistries at gmail.com, or call our prayer line and leave your prayer request, 918-893-5522. That's 918-893-5522. God richly bless you, and we'll see you next week.